Embedded images are also shipped with an application like local images, but instead of having a copy of the image in each application's file structure, the image file is embedded in the assembly as a resource. This method of distributing images is recommended when identical images are used on each platform and is particularly suited to creating components, as the image is bundled with the code. Good day everyone. I'm Michael, and I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Embed an image in XAML and encode behind. 2. Create a custom markup extension. Now let's open the Visual Studio and do some coding. So here, I already created the project and name it demo.embed underscore image. Here in XAML file, I added an image element and name it my image. To embed an image in a project, go to Solution Explorer. Then right click your shared code to add a folder. We add a folder to organize the images we intend to embed. Now we can add an image to this folder. Right click the folder and click Add New Existing Item. Change the filter to all files. Then select the image you wish to embed. By default, the build action of the image is set to none. This needs to be set to embedded resource. The build action can be viewed and changed in the properties window for a file. We've now added image to the application. Now by default, XAML cannot embed an image. Because there is no built-in type converter from string to resource image source, these types of images cannot be natively loaded by XAML. Instead, a simple custom XAML markup extension can be written to load images using a resource ID specified in XAML which I will be discussing later. For now, let's add the embedded image using c -sharp. With our previous lesson, we use the image source from URI. For embedding image using c -sharp, we're going to use from resource factory method. In this example, the resource ID is demo.embedded underscore image dot my images dot lion dot jpg. The IDE has generated this default by concatenating the default namespace of the project, which is demo.embedded underscore image. And the folder name where the image is located, which is images plus the file name of the image, which is lion.jpg, using a period between each value. Let's run the application. And that's how we embed an image in code behind. Next, I will show you how to embed image using XAML. Since there is no type converter for image source, we need to create a simple custom markup extension to load images using a resource ID specified in XAML. First, as a best practice, we need to create a folder for our markup extension for a more organized structure of our files and data. Let's go to Solution Explorer. Right-click the shared code and create a new folder. Then let's name it Markup Extensions. Inside this folder, we are going to add a class. Let's call it embedded image. Then make this class public. Now, this class should implement the interface I markup extension. This will display an error. Because the namespace that defines the interface was not yet included. We could add the namespace here if we know what namespace is missing. Or we could just click on the error and wait for a drop-down button icon. 
Then click on the drop down button. This will display possible missing namespace or assembly. This interface belongs to xamarin.forms.xaml, so let's select this. This will automatically add the namespace we needed. Aside from namespace, we also need to implement the property or method defined by the iMarkup extension. To implement it, just click the interface and select Implement Interface. It will automatically add the implementation for this interface. And this is a provide value method, which returns an image source. Inside this method, we should return an image source. Instead of hard coded string here, we could just add a public property of this class and called it resource ID with initial getter and setter. Then pass this to image source object. We have a red underline here because we need to resolve the namespace for the image source object, which is Xamarin Forms. We just do what we did to iMarkup extension, and that is maximizing the features of the IDE. Another thing we need to consider to this class is that if this resource image is null or an empty string, or the developer forgets to provide one, we need to check on that. We need to check the validity of the value to avoid unexpected error at runtime. So let's add condition to validate the return object. Whenever the resource ID is null or empty, it will return a value of null and prevent the app from crushing. This is all we have to do to create a custom markup extension. Then we can now remove the code in code behind and embed it in XAML. To use our customer markup extension, we need to add another XML namespace declaration, which is local. The CLR namespace declared within the assembly that contains the public types to expose as elements. This one is the namespace of the project, which is also the name of the project. And this is the name of the folder where the markup extension class is located. Now we can set the value of the source of our image element. Remember, whenever we use a markup extension, we always add open and close curly brackets inside the quotation marks. This is to instruct the program that we are not passing a literal value. Instead, we are using markup extension. Inside this brackets is the name of the class or the markup extension we created. And this is the property we created. Then assign to it the image location and file name. Let's run the app again. There you have it. That's we embed image in XAML and create custom markup extension. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.